Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a discovery of two extremely large galaxies. The galaxies we usually refer to as giant radio galaxies. And what this new study suggests is that there might be a lot more of them hiding in the depths of space. Mostly because of where these two galaxies were found and how they were discovered. But today I also wanted to talk about the idea of giant radio galaxies because honestly, from the first time I started studying astronomy, I was always extremely fascinated by these absolutely gigantic objects. The objects that are so big that it's actually mind-boggling. It's almost impossible to imagine it in human terms. Now I think the most famous giant radio galaxy is this one right here, the iconic Hercules A. And this image unfortunately doesn't do it enough justice. This is a huge object. It technically can be compared to a galactic cluster, not just a large galaxy. And I think one of the best examples to try to imagine all of this is to compare Milky Way galaxy to the largest galaxy we've ever discovered, which as many of you know is the galaxy known as IC1101, and then compare all of this to the biggest giant radio galaxy we've found. Now it's kind of difficult to imagine all of these scales, but let's start with the Milky Way galaxy. Now one of the best images to try to imagine the size of our own galaxy is actually from Adam Grossman from the Planetary Society who created this beautiful image that you see right here to illustrate the size of the galaxy itself. And what this little dot here shows you is the diameter of about 200 light years or essentially the extent of radio transmissions of humanity from the beginning of first radio transmissions roughly around 100 years ago. And that little dot is basically that tiny pixel you see on the right side. This represents about 200 light years in diameter, the extent of radio transmissions from the early 20th century, and that's how all of this compares to the size of the Milky Way galaxy. With this here being roughly around 100,000 light years across. But then compare this to the largest galaxy we've ever discovered, IC1101. The total diameter of the halo here is anywhere from 4 to 5 million light years across. And that's roughly around 50 times larger than the Milky Way galaxy, making this basically the biggest galaxy, at least by size, that we've ever found. In more visual terms, this is sort of how they compare size-wise. Here's the Milky Way galaxy, and right next to it is the humongous IC1101. Definitely a galaxy that often reminds me how absolutely tiny and insignificant we all are. But anyway, that's not really the point. The point is that that's not really it yet. We still have something even larger. Something that's just like Hercules A right here is essentially in a class of its own. It is a galaxy, but it has these very peculiar features that make it the largest object, the largest galactic object in the universe. Now, just like IC1101, this right here is the galaxy itself. But all of these radio galaxies will also have these really large protrusions formed by the astrophysical jets that often extend to several million light years away from the center. With the actual center usually resembling something like this, something akin to a typical elliptical galaxy. And in the last few decades, we've discovered close to about a thousand of them, and a lot of them seem to have very similar features, and a lot of them seem to be extremely, extremely large. I'm posting one of the links in the description where you can actually check out how many different giant galaxies we've already discovered over the past few years. Here's also the rough location of most of these galaxies in the night skies, with surprisingly a lot of them being present in this location right here. But let's get back into the scales and sizes here. So Hercules A is a really large galaxy. But Hercules A is right here. It's really small in comparison to some of the typical giant radio galaxies we've discovered so far, with some of them reaching sizes of close to 20 million light years across, making them at least five times larger than IC1101. And in this picture, Milky Way galaxy isn't even visible, but we can see the nearby Cygnus A galaxy, the galaxy that has some of the most spectacular pictures we've ever taken. And what this means is that radio galaxies come in different shapes and different sizes. But for the most part, their shape is usually the same. The sizes, though, do seem to vary quite dramatically. And as of today, the largest such galaxy is the galaxy known as J1420-0545. It doesn't really have a better name just yet, and it's also not particularly well studied, but it is the largest such object we've discovered. 
with the overall size being roughly around 16 to maybe 17 million light years across. And going back to our Milky Way and IC1101 example here, that would make this galaxy roughly around this big. And I guess this is not the best representation of this, but size-wise, it does seem to be relatively accurate. With the center of the galaxy itself being relatively difficult to see and not particularly bright, but the rest of the galaxy emitting these really large and extremely powerful lobes that can be seen from extremely far away distances. And just for fun, I moved the Milky Way galaxy a little bit closer, and that's basically how it looks like in comparison to this tremendously humongous object. But I guess it's also important to understand that these lobes, or these very bright radio objects right here, are just a part of the galaxy and do not actually represent any stars or any typical objects we find in galaxies. These are radio emissions which most likely are caused by the very powerful jet creating a kind of a bow shock on two sides where it essentially hits the intergalactic medium and a lot of gas that's circulating in this region and then creates these radio emissions that are observable from really far away distances. And you can learn more about this from the paper I'm posting in the description below. But in terms of the radio galaxy population, this is actually a very very tiny number. A lot of galaxies are radio galaxies, but only a tiny percentage seems to be these so-called giant radio galaxies. And why certain galaxies become giants is actually a bit of a mystery. We have no idea what causes certain galaxies to become like this. Now initially scientists thought that maybe it's because of the size of the central black hole, but that doesn't seem to be the case. The size of the black hole in them is usually average. Some studies thought that maybe it's because of the amount of various intergalactic medium material. That also doesn't seem to be the case because usually the density of material here is also kind of average. And maybe it has something to do with their age. Maybe by being active for much longer periods, these galaxies are able to form these larger structures. Now that's something that we can't really answer yet, but it is so far the best explanation. So in other words, we have no idea what's happening here. But we do know that it seems that there are a lot more of these giant radio galaxies out there than we initially thought. And this is basically what the recent study discovered. By using the South Africa's Meerkat telescope, the scientists decided to investigate a relatively tiny patch of night skies just to see what they can find there. And to their surprise, they discovered two different giant radio galaxies roughly around 7 million light years across or around 62 times the size of the Milky Way galaxy. Now these are not the largest radio galaxies we've discovered, but it's just unusual how two of them were present in the same tiny patch of the night skies, which by chance is extremely unlikely. As a matter of fact, the probability of finding two giant radio galaxies in such a small area of night skies is only about 0.0003%. And that means that even though we thought that there were about a thousand of these radio galaxies out there, the actual number could be in the millions, possibly even more. It's just a lot of them are either much farther away or are a lot more difficult to detect compared to some of the other galaxies. Also remember, they're called radio galaxies for a reason. It just means that you cannot actually see them, you cannot see these structures in anything but radio waves, specifically between about 10 MHz and about 100 GHz of frequency. If you were to look at them in optical light, you would just see something like this, a typical elliptical galaxy. And there's one more thing I wanted to mention. Some scientists today believe that a typical radio galaxy, if looked at from this angle right here, actually is probably what a typical quasar is. In other words, when we look at a distant galaxy and we see a lot of radio emissions coming from it, we could be looking at something like this just from a different angle. Now, not all scientists agree with this, but it does actually kind of make sense. We're basically just staring at these radio galaxies, but from a different angle. But anyway, it's definitely a very interesting discovery. It does suggest that there are a lot of these giant radio galaxies out there, and it also means that we're going to be discovering more of them in the coming years. Once we get better radio telescopes, we might actually discover something even larger than the largest radio galaxy ever found. But it will probably take a few years, or possibly even a few decades, before we see something that beats this record. But anyway, for now that's all I wanted to mention. You can check out the paper I mentioned in the description below. And all of the other relevant materials that I use in this video are also there as well. On that note, thank you so much for watching. Once we discover something else about radio galaxies or giant radio galaxies, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for all of your support. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. And maybe subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. 
and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.